Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to a brand new podcast on the No Chof Des Network. It is FPL War. Now, I'm sure many of you are fantasy football enthusiasts. I mean, you've joined the No Chof Des League, you've joined the This Is Mappa League, you've joined all sorts of leagues, but you're talking to pros here, people that compete. <laughs> this is serious. This is serious. And I've got a special guest that is going to be doing this pod with me regularly. A guy that I used to do this quite a lot last season until something came up. I think we just got bored with it. But we're not going to get bored with this. Double D from the d d Footy Factory. How you doing, my guy? I'm here, man. I'm all right. I'm all right. All right. Busy, busy. Back to back to back. Back to back pod. You know we do. We don't stop. Yeah. We well, we, we give, give, your, give your pod a plug. Go on, then. Um, the, oh, Good. D and D, that's how you know it's a late one. D and D football factory podcast. Um, we've, we've just wrapped up twenty five, just a little season preview, really, because we've not done one for a, quite a few months. So yeah, back in the mix now. So hopefully they'll be dropping weekly. Because if there's anyone that's pushing for podcasts, uh, it's me. But um, <laughs> we've got the band together today, and we'll be back. Get st- get still on there soon. Get a- Oof. Except, Oof. You know what I'm which I catch you on the day you're not podding because um, this man once did podcasts like every day for like three months in a row. I think Guinness Book of Records should have been knocking your door to be perfectly realistic. Well, it was it was eighty three podcasts in eighty five days over the pandemic. So yeah, I was busy. Yeah. And you know what? It's, to be fair, man, it's because someone who we know, no names mentioned, questioned uh, the work ethic of other podcasters. And I thought, work ethic? Let me show you how it's done. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, well, I'm going to put the link to your pod in the description to your YouTube channel. Everything is going to be there. So you Jeez. can watch D in, in his glory. My but brother. what we're going to do, we're going to reload reload FPL war because this needs to be done because last season was a little bit interesting for a lot of people because we're in uh, your FPL league, which yep. is very, very competitive. You're also in the No Choftas private league with Zahariwa Almonia. We've now got yeah. Alexander Neal, who's the goalkeeper at Doxa, as you guys know, is the, used to be an Almonia goalkeeper. I'm trying to get Marco and Stefan Shepovic on as well, but they're a little bit iffy right now. Maybe <laughs> yeah, I don't know, Marco, Stefan, if you're watching. I'm, I'm busy trying to sort us enough a person. It might happen. We'll see. We'll know within the next five minutes. <laughs> mm. Well, let's see. Rodri Giggs is in there. He's, he's trying to avoid a, a wooden spoon for the third. No, I mean, I mean, I mean for this. I mean for this. I mean for this. Yeah. Oh, for this. For pod. this here. This here. Okay. You know what I'm we'll know in the okay. next five minutes. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm out here. I'm working. I'm trying to tie up Sachedo at this time, like Liverpool. <laughs> okay. 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 Fair, enough. Fair enough. Well, let's see. Let's, let's see what the young man has to say for himself. But. I'll tell you what, let's go straight into our teams. And I'm going to bring up yours first, because you sent it to yeah. me about 15 minutes ago, and I saw um, it, well, and I thought... There's, huh? there's less than 24 hours to the deadline, so expect there to be changes, but that's as it stands now. Okay, as uh, it stands. Okay, it's, it's approximately 23 minutes past midnight on Friday morning. <laughs> so we've still got a bit of time to do. We've got what, till what time? Uh, 6.30, isn't it? Because... Um, Six foot in the evening. Okay. Burnley, Burnley, and Man City kicks off at eight o'clock. Okay, okay. Well, this is your preliminary team. Shall I bring it up like that, or shall we? Is that all right? Does that work yeah, for you? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you got Steele and Pickford as your goalkeepers. You have yeah, Trent. Ray, Ray, Reyes, 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 usually my guy still, but with him, I thought he was going to leave the league, but with him going to um, Arsenal now, you know I don't pick Arsenal players. But um, yeah, two in there. That well, look, that... before, before you continue, before you mm. continue, tell our viewers why you don't pick Arsenal players. <laughs> I don't pick. There's a lot of teams I don't like, but I don't pick uh-huh. players. I don't pick players from teams that I just like. I can't stand that I have real sheer disdain for. So not from uh, Man United, Arsenal, or Chelsea. And usually I get by five, but last season, last season, boy, that that was a real reality check. Let's say real kicking the real kicking the guts with Arsenal doing better than uh, flipping expected. Um, 
Rashford being so cheap, so numerous people had Rashford in their team, and um, um, Chelsea, Chelsea people got their spot points in spots that they had a poor season. Like they sometimes got some clean sheets. Like for instance, Kepa towards the back end of the season was um, a good pick for some people. But yeah, but um, so yeah, I've gone with and Brentford start of the season wasn't the easiest anyway. But I've got Steele and Pickford in. Uh, because even if they don't get clean sheets, I reckon that they could get save points. And I like Brighton start to the season, so that, yeah, that's why I've gone with three of their players. Do you know what? I, th- I think Pickford must be one of the highest selected goalkeepers. Yeah, I haven't checked the stats, but he must be. Because I think under Sean Dyche, they'll be much more solid defensively. Yeah. He'll make the saves. I don't think he'll concede a bag of goals like he did last season. And he's cheap, so yeah, he's exactly. good for a number two. Well, as it stands, he's owned by 14.7%, which is quite high for a um, uh, goalkeeper. That's quite high. You know what I'm saying? Because okay. goal- it's shared about a lot because some people have these two, Anana, Ramsdale, obviously, or they'll go with Alisson and Edison because they know if you don't get the clean sheet points, you're going to... Alisson especially, there's going to be save points if Liverpool continue yeah. where they are at the moment, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, bro, you've got Trent, Salah mm. and Haaland. They're the yeah. three big money guys now. Yeah, I, I, need pick, to, uh, I, I picked them three first, the premiums first, just as the template so that I could build around them because I knew if I tried to do it later, then it wouldn't work. But yeah, I, I did that now. But you, you know me still. If it, I, Trent doesn't do what I think he's going to do, then I'll just go to Robertson to save 1.5 and then that will allow me to replenish other areas in the team yeah. for like a two, three week period. Well, look, Salah and Haaland are the two most expensive players. Harry Kane is probably going to be taken off because he's just agreed a move to Bayern Munich, mm. which I said on the 4th of June he was going to do, by yeah. the way. You know, anyway, I'm not <laughs> saying too much more. <laughs> but you've obviously mixed the match with the likes of Mitoma that's going to guarantee you points. Eze probably will be the, the standout player, player for Palace. But what about Foden? Because... As we know, he wasn't an ever present at the ever present at City last season. Yeah. Have you have you decided to put him in because Gundogan is gone, or is it just you got a feeling that he's going to be playing a lot regularly? Um, I think maybe even in, in but just they're talking about him because I've not watched any City preseason games, bar if you include it as a preseason game, the Community Shield. Um, but they're saying that it, he's been playing when he has been got pitch time in Gundogan's kind of position, so like left midfield and then join and then go centrally um, in attacks. So I'm hoping, he, though he didn't start the community shield, that he can stack points. Um, just going to say sheer fact, the sheer fact that because of the start City have, that um, I wanted to have at least two of their players in. But I did actually have Madison in originally. I took Madison out for Eze to look at the back line. That may change again because I'm going to be fiddling about with the team uh, varying drafts in the afternoon. Um, so, yeah, I've gone for... So, yeah, I've gone for that right now. So, so Rabi will probably change. I just did that because he's a five million attacker to see what I could fit around that. But there's numerous people being brought in. I was into with Diaby. I had to check on his price because I think that he's going to do well. I've always been a fan of him. And I think Villa have got him for much cheaper than I thought he'd go for in midfield. At the back, Max Ahrens has just signed for Bournemouth. So I might find a way of getting him in um, soon. Um, and even though I've got three Brighton men, if I do decide to change Steel or Stupidan, up top, João Pedro could be an option. So there's just varying things going through my... This is why I just make other teams just as like re, other reboot teams just to have them there. So when they get points, I know it's at least one team um, <laughs> that I've made. You get me? So... Um, well, bro, if you yeah, were going to we'll go with this team, let's just say this is the mm. final draft. Yeah. Yeah, let's just say you're not going to make any changes. Yeah. What formation are you planning? I'm guessing 4-4-2... No, no, it's three, it's three, four, three, as it stands. Okay, three, four, three. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I thought if I've got a Luton man in there, though, I would expect Brighton to get a clean sheet. Um, that game's going to be at home for Brighton. Um, I think they changed. I think it was going to be a Luton, but they changed or something like that. So, um, if not, then I wanted to have Morris in there. 
but I'll see that may change. I don't know. I'll look around at prices because obviously I decided ages ago, but I made two or three changes in terms of SA from Madison. That allowed me to free up money to get a stew pen in at the back. And then I changed Michael Keane to Ethan Pinnock, I think. Um, otherwise, yeah, that's more or less what I've had since my first mm. draft. Mm. Well, Brighton's first three games are Luton, Wolves and West Ham, which are all winnable. Yeah. But then they play Newcastle and Man United. Yeah, exactly. That's are you going to make any changes? You think you're going to make any changes in that respect? Probably, because you know after the first one or two weeks, you see what teams are doing and then you you rush about and change things. I'll be trying to avoid um, taking points hits, but sometimes there's nothing you can do and you end up yeah. having to death or take them. And sometimes they, they really pay off. But um, I don't want to be one of the people that use my free hit or wild card so early in the season because that fared well for me last season, saving the free hit. And, um, and well, wild card, you've got to use it in the first part of the season anyway. But saving my free hit and bench boost till quite late in the season really paid off when you, with the double game weeks and that. Okay, so you just said that it's best to use the wild card in the first phase of the season. The first oh no, no, you, you you get two anyway. That's what I'm saying. So you have yeah. to use the first one early in season. But I tried to push that and leave that until around Christmas. It was awkward yeah. to walk up last season to around Christmas. So I know I've got that team for a bit. So then when I use the second one deeper in, I know that it's definitely him for that run in the last ten games or so to kill it because there'll probably be at least one double game week in there whether it be because of FA Cup or if anything gets postponed or whatever that the double game weeks will come mm. well I'll, I'll be honest with you mate I've I've lost a lot of interest in the Premier League but FPL has kept my interest in the in the Prem because yeah. I, I like staying on top of the results and just watching you know the players doing well and I'm not one of these people where you know I will watch a game just for the sake of watching it, I'll watch it if I've got some players in the, involved in that game. That makes sense. So, yeah, yeah it's, it's an interesting one. But I know you're a big Liverpool fan. You've put in Gakpo up front. Before we talk about him, yeah. Mo Salah, he's the guy that's consistent. He's the one that's yeah. going to get you points. And I yeah. think you've done very well to fit him into your team, given A, his price. Yeah. And B, you've got Mitoma in there, Trent in there. They're going to get you yeah. points. Haaland, obviously. But do you... Do you think that Liverpool not having Champions League football will factor or did factor in your decision because Salah will probably be rested for the Europa League? This is it. This is why, because he's not shocking, but surprisingly, I thought he'd be more around the 30, 35% ownership. But last time I looked, he was around 25. So, or even just under, I think it was like 24.8 or 24.9. So in that respect, I'm a little surprised because as you're saying, because it's Europa League football and not Champions League, if we're going away to a team you can't pronounce, he at the most will be on the bench if he even travels at, at all for the away game, which means he can start consistently in the league matches. So I think early on especially, I think he's going to explode. He always scores on the opening day anyway. This is about to be seventh season Liverpool. In the previous six seasons, he scored on the opening day. So even if we don't beat Chelsea, I expect him to score. So um, Old Cup as well. So there's something there as well. You know what I'm saying? There's incentive there. So I think, yeah, he's going to explode. For that sheer fact that he, at the most out of the six, will probably only start two group games, if he starts any at all, in the... Um, Europa League, which will be able to go full pelt in the league. So I think he'll deliver. And up top with Gakpo, I could have gone for anyone in Liverpool starting five because everyone is scoring. It's the defence of the midfield that needs to be better. But they're, still, they're saying we're going to get Sacedo. Could be a 100 million package. If we get him, that makes me feel more confident about the midfield. And we've actually just done a season preview. And I said, we'll come fourth. If we get him, that moves me up a place. And then if we make another one or two signings, then could be a sneaky title challenge yeah. just because of the fact it's Europa League football. Um, I'm, I'm not sure it'd be enough to win it, but it, could, uh, it raises the possibility of it um, of it happening. So, yeah, so it could pick anyone, but Gakpo for the assisting, and because I think he's the, everyone can play on the left or right or the centre, but Gakpo played against Darmstadt in a friendly on Monday in a like 10 position behind the front three. So his versatility, versatility should get him more starts, but we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Well, Trent for me is a no brainer. I've got him in mind, but I'll go into that in a bit. You know, his new role at Liverpool doesn't 
have any impact on my decision. I wanted him in. In fact, I was trying to fit him in last season, but I went with Trippier for most of the season and I was I was pleased that it went well. Yeah. But the thing is, you've, you've got quite a few players that take your set pieces. So you've got Trent, you've got Mitoma that takes some corners, you've got Eze yep. takes free kicks and corners. Yep. Salah Fo penalties. Fo been on set pieces in a couple of City's preseason games. Yep. Um, yeah, she said Salah Sarabia, but that may change. Um, Gakpo's taken one or two corners, so we'll see. Pinnock is a threat ahead of from set pieces. A stupid man might take a couple of free kicks. You've got the, the uh, Bell, Bayer. So there's people... It's, it's, I'm confident that all these guys can deliver, can deliver some points, you know. Can deliver some points. I just want to get the good starts. And then if I do flake coffees, not as costly as last season, when I never had Haaland to start the season, I was just playing catch-up the whole bloody season. I mean, well, this is the thing. Last season, we had the, the Queen's death, which... Yeah, uh, you know, got in the way of a lot of people's points because they had to change things around. Then you had the World Cup, and it was a, a, a difficult one in terms of your performance last season. Are you pleased with it? Could you have done better? No, no I'm not pleased. It's the first time I've not got well over two thousand points since. Oh wow, seven years ago. Um, I mean, I just fell under two thousand, if I remember correctly from a couple of months ago. And yeah, I'd been bagging over 2,000 and finishing in the top 260K in the world. Okay. Um, so yeah, I was disappointed for you. I only came 13th in the Justice League and I came 5th in that the season before last. So yeah, last season it worked at all because look, I was always fighting the losing battle because not even just how long it took me to get Haaland into the team. Um, with Arsenal having so many players that did well in... Or even the likes of Xhaka chipped in with some points from midfield. But with the clean sheets that they got, so at the back, Ben White, Gabriel, and Ben White got goals and assists, Gabriel got goals, Ramsdale with goal in the midfield, Saka. Uh, Jesus started well, but in the midfield, mainly Saka, yeah. Martinelli and Odegaard stacking so many points. I was playing teams sometimes that had all three of them in the midfield and had Rashford as well, and etc. If you were to play, as I've just put, I've put out um, a little FPL preview on my blog page, danzigzags.co.uk. <laughs> Shameless plug, product integration, you know how why we not? go. Why um, not? Yeah, why not? Why not? Um, so um, if you were to they were to have that same midfield and have a Matoma or Almiron, that's going to cost you like over 40 million. Add Haaland to that. That's 54, 55 million out of your budget gone already. So then what, to fill the other nine positions in your team, you're going to only have 45 million, 46 million. You, it's only going to be enablers that you'd be able to have. So, um, But the thing is, bro, like you, you mentioned, you know, Newcastle, but I haven't got any Newcastle players in for my fact, no, but they've got team. horrible start to the season. They'll come in as the season goes on, but their, their first five or six games are not nice at all. Yeah. And the thing is, they've got a, a dearth of talent in midfield. So I, I wouldn't know which one to pick that will play regularly. You know, yeah. Gimaraes, is it Jolinton? Is it. Oh, Gimaraes um, Gim Gim will be the mainstay in the midfield. It's the other positions. We've well, got Tonali there. You've got Tonali, you've got, Tonali, you've got Almiron. Yeah. Yeah. You've got. Uh, who's the lad from? Uh, Gordon. Yeah. Anthony Gordon. You've got uh, Harvey Barnes. So yeah. I, I, I can't. I can't gauge which. So for me, it's that like people, Pep people, people like slept Pep on people slept on Buzz last season because mm. um, he got was it thirty league goals? I think it was, and I never saw his ownership over two percent. I think people, what too many people do is they look and they think, oh, Leicester in the bottom, so I'm not going to pick any of their players, not realising that him and Madison delivered a good amount of points because it's about whether. When these attackers, you don't worry about your clean sheets because you only get one point for that. It's whether or not you think they can score or not against the opposition. Don't worry about whether or not they're going to win the game or not. Just worry if they can get you points. You know what I'm saying? So, Well, yeah, bro. You know what? It's, it's that time of year where you can't exactly say I'm happy with my team fully. I don't yeah. think there's anyone out there that's fully, fully no. happy with their team. No, 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 no. no. You know, no, even, no. you know, my, my team, I, I'll tell you what, let, let me bring my one up because 
I've changed so many players. And I'll tell you what, I was going to have Buendia in my team, but unfortunately for him, he's up an injury. That's why they're trying to get... Season, probably. Yeah, so they're trying to get um, Zaniolo, if you don't yeah. know. Yeah, so that, that so would this be a is very good Stel's place. Lot. Let me see if I can bring it up on the screen. So yeah. my two goalkeepers, pretty standard. I've, I've gone with Onana. Yeah. Because I think he'll obviously play every game for United. Um, hey, there's a possibility of him assisting with the way how good he can pass the ball. Yeah, of course. Of course. And don't forget, he's uh, he's got a better defence in front of him now that Maguire's going. <laughs> <laughs> you took it there. Yeah, I had to. I had to. I've got Sanchez as my, my number two. I was going to have Pickford. I'm not going to lie. But then I thought, you know what? Sanchez is a good backup to have because he will start for Chelsea. No no doubt about it. Yeah. No doubt about it. I haven't decided... Actually, I have decided on the formation, but I'll, I'll tell you guys afterwards. So my... my Defenders like Gabriel, who's, who was fantastic last season, points-wise, got 146. Estupinian yeah. came good back into the season. Yeah. Left back, he's going to get some points. Yep. Bayer, the, the Burnley guy, I think yep. he's from the cheapest options, he's probably the best one because yeah. he's going to play regularly. Yeah, and I there's, think with... there's Bulldog at Sheffield as well, but he might not definitely be a starter, but there's some good options. Bogle's, in Bogle's injured, isn't he? So. Yeah, but there's some good... I um, think it's in there. What, Colwell? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Cole, yeah, 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 he'll yeah. play games for Good sure. Player. Then Trent, again, no brainer. But the midfield for me was always going to be the difficult one. The, the front, the, the strikers, I knew Haaland 100%. Darwin Nunes has been sensational in pre season. And I think with the system that Liverpool are playing now, he will thrive. And I brought in uh, Joe Pedro uh, yeah, yesterday yeah. evening in yeah, place yeah. of uh, Mateta. So no, so Edward, Edward, Hudson Edward. Oh, okay, 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 yeah. Because losing Zaha, I think, is gonna hurt them personally. Yeah. This this guy, this guy that they've brought in, um, is they're, they're talking like he, he's a, um uh Anthony, like a show pony, and they're not sure about the end product. Though Anthony did start off in terms of goal scoring quite well for United. Um so we'll see whether or not you can do the job that Wolf um has done all um, well, yeah. not just that job because Wolf, Wolf is a Crystal Palace legend. Whether he can do a worthy job of being yeah. the, um, the replacement um, for Wolf, it will be interesting because Palace finished the season really well. Um, but I think Roy might resort back to them being slightly more defensive because he knew to go all out because of the situation they were in. If he didn't and keep them up, then and it, there would have been no point in bringing them in. We'll see whether or not he's more cautious or not. But they played some lovely stuff to finish yeah. the season, man. Yeah. And the midfield, Saka, uh, Bruno Fernandes, Marcus Rashford, and my two 5.5s have gone with Rodri and Declan Rice. Now, originally, I was tinkering a lot, and I had Saka and Martinelli in midfield. I had Rashford and Fernandes in midfield. Yeah. But something was telling me in my head, I think Saka will not only play more games than Martinelli, he'll get more points because he takes penalties, yeah. set pieces, etc. They brought in Trossard. He might be used as a false yeah, nine. False nine, yeah. You know, I Jesus can't see injury. anyone challenging Saka for that right wing position. Mm. I don't know. Havertz ain't going to play there. Yeah. I don't know who else also got that can play that right wing slot. So uh, what, Reese Nelson? Maybe, maybe Smith Rowe could, but yeah, Reese can play on both sides, can't he? Um, yeah. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's that's a guessing game. There's no certainty. Yeah, he's gonna play on the right, so I get that hundred percent. Of course, of course. Bruno Fernandez is a no-brainer for me. Certainly now that he's become captain. Yeah, I think if he wasn't captain, I'd be a bit iffy given the signings that United have made and Amrabat possibly coming in. Ericsson will be on the bench. Were you, were you tempted to? Rotate. Were you tempted to put Mount in? No, no, I wasn't. I wasn't, and I, I'll tell you why because. I think Mount will play a lot of games for United, no question about it. But Bruno Fernandes takes penalties, free kicks, captain for that bit extra. It's going to be worth it. And Marcus Rashford is a no-brainer. But people are going to say to me, well, what, why have you put Rodri in? Why have you put Declan Rice? So the simple reason is that I believe that Rodri will be the mainstay in Man City's midfield. I don't think Pep will rotate him as much. When you look at the options that they've got, Calvin Phillips, will he pick him ahead of Rodri for most of the games? No. 
Will Kovacic play more than Rodri? No. Who do they have in the middle of the park that can do what Rodri does? And given that he scored the goal in the final and he scored a lot of important goals for City last season, I think him... I can I can say I'll be happy if he sits on the bench a few times because I'm happy with the options that I've got. And Declan Rice, again, if he was at West Ham, would I have picked him? No, because he'd have played much deeper. But given his performance in the Community Shield at Arsenal, though, the way that he was driving forward, creating, getting in the box, it's going to be a different Declan Rice role. So I think at 5.5 million, it's a snip, personally. So, yeah, and I've gone with Jean Pedro up front because... I think that he's going to be a fantastic player for Brighton, especially yeah. if they utilise him in a number 10 role. Yeah, 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 yeah. Decent finishes. Well, yeah, that, was a, that was a good signing. Newcastle were heavily linked to him. In fact, they had yeah. a deal done, but then they, I don't know what happened to it at the start of last season. But yeah, that could be a... a I'm high, ah, if only you could pick... If you could pick four from a team, then boy. But yeah, no, I've got to go with um, the three I've got now. Because I think that there's an opportunity there for the, to have a couple of double ups at the back, given their opponents in the first three games. But yeah, don't be surprised if you see Pedro in my team. But I, 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 do, I do lots of uh, other reborn teams as well. I, I do a, I do a doctor all my team with only black players. In it. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna do. I'm gonna oh my put, god! I'm gonna put. I'm gonna put Jao Pedro. I'm gonna put Jao Pedro and oh Alana, god. Alana in that team. That is and brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> didn't, didn't you see it in League of Gentlemen? I did it last season. I, I, I can't even remember what the name of the team I called it. Though. I called. I think I called it. Um, oh, black. Oh, what was the? <laughs> it's amazing. If my play left me, oh yeah, yeah. So yeah, now you'll see Pedro in that and Anana Rashford etc. Saka in the, in that team, but yeah. Um, I'm going to make two or three other teams before the deadline just to fart about and slap them in League of Gentlemen. But yeah, obviously the main team will be my team. But um, uh, I'm, I'm annoyed though because um, I've put it in the uh, the piece I plugged earlier. They've banned me. They've banned my team name. Yeah. I've I've had for over, five, for over five years, I've had um, She Said Bend Me Over and um, as my team name and they flagged it. And if you, your appeal is um, unsuccessful, then um, you could be possi- facing the possibility of being banned, so it's not worth it. So yeah. I've gone I've gone with Cash Me Outside for now. Um, That's fine. That's but, fine. Um, in terms of Matty Cash Me, you get me? But um, yeah, I'm annoyed because um, <laughs> team name, yes, some people have got, there's never people with all right team names. There's guys with like a team name that's to them, that they might only understand, that's fine. But some people have really crapped team names and some people have just got brilliant team names that actually perform better, better than they actually do during, during the season I'm thinking right, how long do you think you to come up with that you get what I'm saying so absolutely so, but you, if you look through all the leagues you're in you do see some brilliant names oh of course of course well bro we've been going on for almost half an hour now the one thing I want to touch on before we, we move on or maybe there's I don't know if there's anything else you want to discuss mm-hmm. are the points comparison from last season to now yeah. And also the the percentage in terms of the picks, because I think Haaland is a no-brainer for a lot of people. You look at that, it's 87.6%. Well, well, it, see, he's good up already. Because the Kane to buy, he was 85 before. So because mm. obviously this Kane news, Haaland is the only proper premium striker now, so f- premium forward rather. So yeah. he's going to go up. He's going to go well over 90% and be the highest owned player in the history of FPL. Mm. Well, yeah, it's not a surprise. Look how many points he got last season, 272. That 14 million is steep. And I think that they've been very um, nice because I thought Saka, for instance, would be more expensive. So I thought he'd be 9 or 9.5 million with his return in goals in his GNA last season. So I think they've been very, very, very kind in the pricing. Mm-hmm. Are you surprised that Martinelli's only been selected by 14.3%? I think it's because of the Trossard threat. Right. Um, but that I'm sure that will probably go up it's a trust because he takes that pieces sometimes for Arsenal as well so um, yeah. Uh, yeah I think it's the trust hard for it. that will probably go you'll probably see that at a stage in the, the high uh, sorry the mid the low to mid 20s and may, maybe yeah. even more but yeah. yeah 
There, there was one that surprised me down here, Callum Wilson. Only 9.7% of people picked him. Yeah. And you're looking at Newcastle and they've only got really one other forward with, with Isaac. Isaac, yeah, probably because of their ugly start to the season. If they had easier games, that would probably be about 14%, I reckon. Okay. And what about Son at 4.7%? Now, I'm not trying to be funny, but with Harry Kane leaving, obviously it's going to hurt Spurs. Yeah, well, it, it, he'll have more freedom to shoot, won't he, with, with Kane gone? <laughs> this is it. I, I tell you what, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to bring this up because last season, you in, your head, in your head-to-head league, right? <laughs> in your head-to-head league, I put Son in my team and gave him the captain's armband the day I was playing against Boots. And Boots loves this game. And it was against Leicester. <laughs> <laughs> you smashed it because I brought him in. I brought him in just for that game, but I didn't captain him. I, 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 I um, flipping. I got shook at the last moment, and I was actually at a friend's mum's sixtieth birthday when that game was on, and the goal notifications were just blinging off my phone. Um, <laughs> and then Son come off the bench, and then flipping went absolutely nuts <laughs> with the hat trick, packing him outside the box. And what I wish I'd captured him because of my the master stroke I pulled the season, the twenty twenty one season, right? Um, someone hold tight. There's a guy called Karam. He he actually won the Justice League last season, and okay. he and he um, said a press conference from notes from a Jose Mourinho interview before Man United played Tottenham. Oh, and um, I've disappeared. <laughs> Man United took me off. Before um, Tottenham played, um, he's had enough of me, um, before Tottenham played, uh, went to Old Trafford, right? And it said on the FPL app that Son had a 25% chance of playing. But what I usually do given time, because sometimes might be working, whatever, I listen to the press conferences rather than listen to them because there have been players that have been said to be injured before they've still played. And Mourinho was talking in riddles about Son. So I said, he started. So I left Son in my team, but again, I was shook to give him the captaincy and they beat you lot 6-2 and Son got two goals and two assists. And at that time, my team, I was absolutely flying, but I refused to put in the likes of Bamford and that. So after me, I was in the top 8,000 in the world you know, at that stage. And then, I never put certain people in, started to take risks and got like, um, you know I mean, too complacent and yeah. took points hits and that. And I ended up dropping down and ended up in the top 200,000 more. But I was running away. I was top of every league I was in apart from one. I was top of 15 leagues. So hey, top of 14 I, and second in one. Hey, I'll tell you what, last season was the best season I've had since 2017. So, uh, you know, I, I was pleased with the way it went. But again, one week I got a little bit cute because Everton were playing. I forget who they were playing, but I picked Mikhelenko at left back. Yeah. And the midfielder, I forget his name, the Belgian lad. I forget his oh, name. Oh, Anana. Anana, yeah. I put him in there and it went tits up. And then from then I was downhill. I mean, the first... In week five, I was in the top 28,000 in the UK. Ooh. And overall, top 75,000. And I just slipped off after that. And it's like, you know what? I need to stay focused. But you know what it's like? You you make these changes and then you're thinking, ah, oh, you know, shall I use my wild card now? Yeah. No. Shall I substitute two players? No. And then you regret it. So it's frustrating. I can understand why... People are so addicted to it, but it's fun at the same time. And I, I think that this is a this podcast that we're doing is, is yeah. a bit of fun. And I hope that people enjoy what we're doing. And if, it'll be great to hear what other people are doing with their teams. Just stick yeah. it in the comments what your favorite players are, your value for money players, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Let us know what you've been doing with your teams. Because you know, we've got our own leagues. I'm gonna put some of the the, the the codes in the description so more people can get involved and yep. yeah. Because the, because the um the the thing is is that if you're an indecisive person, then uh, this it can be very brutal. I've had previous weeks where I thought, oh, let me use my free hit now. 
And that was, I think I used it because of the lack of people playing I did my team. This is back in the 18 to 19 season. So it was the day that Arsenal and Liverpool played in the 18 to 19. Yeah, the day that we went on TalkSport. There you go. I, me and you went on the extra time yes. show on TalkSport yes. that day there. But earlier on, I was with my cousins, right? And I used my free hit. And of the players, people that I took out, five of them scored. Five of them scored. Shakir, wow. this person, that person, wow. all scored. And <laughs> that's the closest FBL's ever brought me to tears. I was like, oh my <laughs> God. And they, two of them scored. It was like three minutes, five minutes. I thought, look at, look at this. <laughs> this is why I prefer to use it now, the free hit especially, and even the bench boost towards the back end of the season. Yeah. You know? that's, that's what I'm going to do because, as you know, when it comes to European games and you go deep into the competition, there's going to be some games that might be cancelled or if clubs go through in the League Cup or the FA Cup, that's the time when you need to use your, your free hit yeah. or your second wild card. I'm going to try and wait as long as possible to use my wild card for the round one. Mm. But then again, you never know. Injuries, suspensions, weird team selections. Yep. Yeah. You, you, you just yep. never know. But I'm not going to lie to you. I'm still not 100% happy with my, my squad. Yep. But at least I know that if one or two players aren't going to make it, or if one or two players are, I don't know, injured or whatever, I won't need to make more than one free transfer yeah. because each of those players are going to start. They're all going to start their teams. Yeah. Or well, most of them anyway. But I think, as I said, the, the only iffy one is Rodri and possibly João Pedro. But the rest, they're going to start. Mm. So I'm I'm all right in that respect, and that's that's the mistake I'm, I've made in previous years. Mm. I've tried to put pick eleven players yeah. that will start week in week out that will play, yeah. and ignored the bench. But then you've got bench boost that you can use, and obviously the, the this so is the thing because certain times, especially when you're messing with people like Pep Guardiola, he might have a game where. And you always think, oh, someone could do something off the bench. He has games sometimes where he doesn't make any substitutions. So therefore, if you make those subs, then that first person on the bench especially becomes vital. So even if it is, because lots of people I know have go heavy on the main eleven, and then they have their bench with some, they sometimes pick people that aren't going to play. And I'm thinking, okay, so one thing if... Um, you, you don't care about your bench, but at least if you're going to use a wild card or whatever, pick people that you've seen in that same price region that are playing, because there's always two. There's always at least two people that you're thinking, oh, they're a reasonable price and they're playing. You get me? A couple of seasons ago, it was Livermento at Southampton. And then obviously he had the injury and basically he's lost um, the whole of last season. You know what I'm saying? So there's always someone very cheap, four or 4.5 million that are playing games that at least have them on your bench. And if one of those starters don't start, you know what I'm saying? You know, pep roulette will happen or sometimes... What I hate is when you get the team, you say, I wish they would stop with these leaks. It's annoying because then the system gets... Cr- cr- the server crashes and it's a whole leap of problems. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because Man yeah. City team... I remember that one that time when you, you spoke to Steve. You spoke to Steve there. And he was saying Harlem was starting. And then all this news got about to other people. And then the server crashed. <laughs> and then Harlem ended up not starting. So the server crashed for no reason. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? For no reason. You know? And uh, I'm there, radio, trying to do an app. Didn't work. Got home. Went on there. Because I remember the kickoff time changed. I yep. think this was the day when the kickoff was at three o'clock. Because yep. the early game got postponed or something like that. And then... So this person that was central's going to start didn't start. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. And then that's when, though it's meant to be fantasy, the reality kicks in and you just get so stressed. And then if anything else happens that weekend to annoy you, you're pissed off, especially if your team loses, then <laughs> exactly. you're going to go off for one. You get me? So, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Well, here's a question. My two players who are known as enforcers, yeah. Rice and Rodri, as a percentage, how many people do you think selected Rodri in their team? Um, four. He got he got hundred hundred and eight points last season. By the way, four percent. Try two point four. There you go. 
It always around that because obviously people are going to go for the people that they think are going to score. But as yeah. you said, if he's because though he's actually just said in that scummy newspapers um, yesterday, they did an article saying that he's saying he can't be playing 56 games this season. It's not realistic or whatever. So that might put people off as well, though a lot of people wouldn't necessarily be picking him anyway. So, yeah. um, and, and yeah, Declan so, Rice as a percentage? How many? How many? Declan did you think? Rice. Um, again, I'm going to go four, four or five percent. Six point four, which ain't bad. There you go, six point four. But it's the yeah. same amount of people that have selected Jack Grealish. Six point four percent. Yeah, because they don't know whether or not Grealish Alvarez might be a sleeper, but it's to a point where you can't really call him a sleeper no more because so many people don't. They might not actually be doing the talking about him. Not really a sleeper, obviously. Yeah. It depends. If Pep goes in with that same formation into the community shield, Alvarez against Burnley, because Burnley like to press and like to pass it around, he might be the one to sneak in. He might be more likely to score than mm. Arland, because people are going to try double up on Arland at times when they can. I mean, Bro, be Joe stuff. Linton. Joe Linton as a percentage. 3%. 1.2. Yeah. <laughs> So even people are, are looking at Newcastle, not just us. Yeah. People are looking at Newcastle thinking he's going to rotate a hell of a lot. Yeah, 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 yeah. With Shambol, obviously early doors, he could name the same 11, but with Champions League landing, um, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, so, that's interesting. That's interesting. Kulisevsky, 1.7%, which is an interesting one for me. I think yeah. that's that's a, certainly a, a differential there. Bailey, 0.7%. Ooh, it's probably because of the, the, the Abbey. The Abbey would have definitely yeah. have affected that one. For sure. For sure. Who else? Let's have a look what, what while we're doing this. Caicedo, 3%. They'll probably go out if he joins Liverpool. Yeah, Thiago yeah. Silva, 2%. Anthony at Man United, 1.5%. Wow. This is Tielemans at Villa 1.3%. I'm sure he'll play a lot of games. Boy. These, these are yeah, this Boy. is this is very surprising. A lot of what's going on. Very, very interesting. But then you've got the obvious ones like Martial 0.3%. I mean, the only people that select Martial <laughs> are Martial FC for crying out loud. <laughs> but who's who's gonna select Martial? One surprise here is Wilson at Fulham. Five uh, 0.2% at 5.5. Yeah, million. that's uh, interesting because things has thing played in their preseason games. I've not checked. Is Pereira back because he got injured at the back of the I don't last know, but Wilson, season? Wilson was playing in preseason. I was, I was I saw a couple games so, where he well, was. Let me, have a, let me have a check because if not, then as you said, that's a real. I know Fulham have got the kindness opening games, but Harry Wilson. Again, they're more thinking of whether Fulham are going to win the game or not. Wilson can score from anywhere with that left peg. And if yeah. he's on set pieces as well, especially if Pereira's out, then believe me, that that is a sleeper. You mean that? He was on loan at um, Bournemouth a couple of seasons ago and he was their joint top scorer at that season. He was there yeah. with Callum Wilson. Yeah. <laughs> I think he got nine league goals. Like that. You know what I'm saying? So, um, Crazy, isn't it? Crazy. Right. But the, I'll tell you what, there's a, I think there's quite a few players that will surprise this season that have got a low selection percentage. I mean, Colwell, 3.1%. I went with him because I know he's going to start. He's 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 got to start, and even if he doesn't, at least he's a four point five that you can replace yeah, him but with. As you said, else. as you as you said, I also don't pick Chelsea players, but as you said, he should be because obviously Liverpool have been trying to get him and one yeah. or two other teams. So therefore, and obviously Brighton wanted him back permanently. So therefore, if they're not promised to be starting, there's no way you would have signed a new long contract with them. So, oh, for yeah. sure, so, Kieran yeah. Tierney. 4.5 million, 0.4%. Yeah, that makes more sense though, because if he's gone into the community shield and played Timber at left back when you've got a Jew and he's right footed and you've got a left foot there, like Tierney, and he's been not a problem for Timber because he can play right back or centre back anyway. So playing on the other side is not a problem. Um, <sighs> yeah, I get that. I wouldn't be surprised if one or two teams try and buy Tierney. I think Newcastle might have a cheeky bid for Tierney. I tell you what, I've got one more question based on the players before we wrap it up because we've done 44 yeah. minutes. I think we've done a good time. Mudrick at 6.5 million. K 
can he, he be? De- he's looked decent preseason. He's looked decent. Yeah. And Chelsea have no Europe, so if I did pick their players, I'd, I'd probably get him in. It's all about different. If you have the differentials in early, then um, that will mean then you could just get in the other people that everyone, everyone else has got, and then that will maintain. Yeah. your lead and that will be helpful especially in head to head sort of like getting the differentials early man because you know there's going to be some random player for instance Jefferson Lerma's a Crystal Palace star there's going to be a random player that scores a couple goals early on you get what I'm saying yeah. it may even be Rodri who's not necessarily random because he just scored the winner in the um Champions League. I know what you mean. No, you know For the case that Some, someone other player, than the usual, someone subjects. other, yeah. And look at load of percentages. That is a differential. Then if you get their yeah. points in early, you're gonna win your head to head, and then you can yeah. look like okay, this person's owned by this person. Let me get this one in. Boom, bam, boom. Yeah. Get me. So, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, mate, thank you very much for doing this. Thank you for everyone Good watching. Job. All the information you require from us is in the description. I'm gonna put in the uh, no chofters, or should I say the the Roy's Wi-Fi League <laughs> uh, <laughs> code to get in. And yeah, I'm going to put the description for these pods when you send me the URL when it's uploaded. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've put it on SoundCloud. I'm just waiting for yeah. them to sort the YouTube out. But yeah, it's already up on the SoundCloud. Excellent, excellent. So hopefully we'll be back this time next week. Adios.